Hello guys, welcome back. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss how to use the if and else statements in Python. Now, without making things too complicated, let's just have a look at this diagram. We just want to create a program where if the total mark which a student gets is less than 50, we will ask Python to say, sorry, you have not met the criteria, please try again later. But if the student has gotten a mark which is higher than 50, the program will say, congratulations, you have passed the test. So visually, as you can see from this diagram, the whole structure can be put into this kind of a representation. Now you can imagine that there can only be two possible outcomes in this whole sequence. Either the person gets a score which is greater than or equal to 50, or the person gets less than 50. So now let's see how we can translate this whole scenario into a code. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and open up a new script like this, because it's convenient to work uh, in a script rather than working in the Python shell for these kind of exercises. So first I'm going to create a variable called result. And that can be equal to the value that we are going to enter. So I'm just going to leave it like this for the time being. Now our conditional statement is going to be something like if the result is, is greater than or equal to 50 and we end this kind of statements with a colon. And when you press enter, you can see that automatically the cursor gets indented to the correct location because right now we are going to specify what needs to be executed if this condition is fulfilled. That's why the cursor is sort of nested within this particular if statement. So if this condition is fulfilled, then I'm going to say print. As we saw from the diagram, we can say Congratulations, you have passed the test. But in case if the result happens to be anything other than this particular condition, and in this case, you can imagine that the condition is basically the result is greater than or equal to 50. So in this case, all the other possibilities can just be a result which is less than 50 from zero all the way up to 49. And of course, we cannot have negative values. That's just our assumption because for a test, usually we score it from zero to hundred. So, so let's say all the other possibilities are basically scores which vary from zero up until 49. So all of that can actually be specified just by saying else and we can specify the colon. And when we just specify else like this, we don't really have to care about all the other possibilities. And now we can say that if this criteria is not fulfilled, so in that case, we can simply say print. Sorry, you have not met the criteria. Please try again later. Now, for example, let's say if I put the result to be 60, the way how this code works is that it's first coming to this line and it's checking whether the result is greater than or equal to 50. And it finds out that that fulfills the condition. In this case, actually it fulfills the condition because 60 is greater than 50, of course. It'll actually execute this particular code and then it'll completely ignore this one. But in case if the score happens to be, let's say something like 23, it'll actually still read this line, but then it'll find out that 23 is less than 50. It doesn't fulfill this criteria so that it'll actually go to this, this particular block and it'll execute anything that's, that has been specified under that else condition. So that's basically the way how this is going to work. So we can actually test it out simply by saving this script. I'm going to name this as if else statements dot py. Yeah, after that we can simply hit F5 to run and you can see that we get the response as sorry, you have net, you have not met the criteria, please try again later. But in case if we happen to change this value, if, let's say we put around 80 and then if we run again, we can see that it results in the prompt saying, congratulations, you have passed the test. Now, what if we put 15 here like this and we can run and you can see that even if it's 50, it actually results in this prompt, which is congratulations, you have passed the test because it agrees with this particular criteria where the result is either greater than or equal to 50. In this case, it's actually equal to 50. So it'll execute this one and it'll completely ignore this part. So I get you got the basic idea how this if else conditional statements work. All right, now let's look at a scenario where you have to grade the student's work based on the results of two tests instead of one. So in that case, what we have is test one 
and test 2. Now let's say that the result of test 1 is result 1 and this is basically variable and the result of test 2 is result 2. So I'm going to just get rid of this for the time being and I'm going to create one variable called result 1 and another variable called result 2. Yeah. So in order to pass the overall examination, a person needs to get 50 or higher in the first test and that person needs to get 40 or higher in the second test. So how do we put this into a conditional statement just like what we did before? Now, as I told you, we have the result 1 and result 2 which are basically the inputs from the user. And now I'm going to say if the result 1 and the result 2. As you can see over here, this AND is basically a logical operator built into Python. That's why it actually recognized immediately when I typed AND and it highlighted it in a different color just like this. So in this case, my criteria is that if the result 1 and the result 2, well, we specify the individual conditions like this. In this case, the result 1 should be greater than or equal to 50. That's our criteria. I'll make some space like this so that it'll be clear. And the result 2 needs to be greater than or equal to 40, like this. And the way we conclude the if statement is basically by putting a colon and when you press enter, you can see that now it actually gives us the opportunity to sort of type in the block of code, which will get executed if this particular criteria is met. And as you can imagine, for everything that corresponds to the scenarios which are other than this particular criteria, we can simply, we don't have to really bother about finding out what they are. We can simply say else and execute the block of code under this else statement. So before that, let's go ahead and press enter over here so that it'll get indented properly. And what I'm going to say over here is print. So I'll basically copy this and paste it over here. But I need to put it inside quotes because it's a, it's a string. And under the else statement, we have to say, sorry, you have not met the criteria. Please try again later. Well, if, now you can imagine for certain students, there could be multiple combinations of scores. Now, one could have 90 for the first test, but only 30 for the second test. So that should be something like 90 over here and 30 over here. And if I run the code now, you can see that it generates this particular response. That means the person has not passed the examination because even though the person actually got 90 marks in the first test, that person didn't manage to get more than greater than or 40 marks in the second test which resulted in this prompt saying that that person has not met the criteria so he or she has to try again later or there could also be a case where the student gets let's say only 45 in the first test but the person manages to get let's say 90 in the second test and if i run this you can say that you can see that it's actually prompting that the person has not passed the examination because right now even though the person managed to pass this test that person didn't pass to manage this test, but in order to pass the whole examination, the criteria is that the person needs to pass both tests. So that's actually the beauty of being able to use these kind of conditional statements in our code so that we can segment even the most complex of uh, possible combinations of outcomes to work in the way which we want them to be. So now let's look at another scenario where we will not be as strict as how we were when grading the student's work uh, to decide whether the student has passed the examination or otherwise. So let's just say that the new criteria is that you have to get 50 or higher in the first test or, very important, get 40 or higher in the second test. Now what's the difference? Now what's different here is that previously the student was asked to suffice both the requirements for passing the whole examination, which means the person had to pass both tests 1 and test 2. But in the second case, the student has to pass only one exam out of the two. And yeah, it goes without saying that uh, there's no harm in passing both tests as well. So now you can imagine that the students do have a bit more flexibility in passing the overall test, isn't it? And from our side, as the programmers who evaluates the situation based on the individual students' results, we also have to do some amendments in our previous code. And we don't actually have to do much. Now in this existing case, the criteria is actually a bit more stringent, where you see that the person has to fulfill this and this but then in the second criteria the student actually doesn't have to fulfill both criteria it'll be sufficient to fulfill this criteria or 
this criteria. And now let's run this one and see what happens. You can see that under the second criteria, the student is actually considered to be someone who passed the overall examination because even though the person didn't pass in the first test, they actually passed in the second test. And of course, if one person manages to pass both the tests, like having 85 for the first one and 90 for the first one, and we can run this and you can see that still actually we get the prompt saying that congratulations, you have passed the test. So before we wrap up this tutorial, we'll see how we can use another logical operator in practical usage. So, so far we discussed two logical operators, which are AND and OR. So the third logical operator is basically called NOT. Now let me give you a quick demonstration where this NOT logical operator can be of some use. Now let's imagine we have a bunch of files in a folder and each file has different file extensions. I'll get rid of this. So let's say I'm going to specify three variables. I'm going to say file type one equals dot CSV because this is one of the most well-known file types and the file type two, I'll say it's dot XLSX and the file type three dot TXT. So one of the ways how you can use this not logical operator is if you say that there's a condition saying that if the file type three is equals equals to dot txt but in this case since we're trying to actually use the not operator what i'm going to say is if the file type 3 is not equal to dot txt then i will say print file is not dot txt something like this and now let's run this one and see what happens you can see that actually the code ran but we did not get any prompt over here that's because it's checking actually the whether the file type is txt or not and this particular statement will get printed only if the file type 3 is actually not .txt but in this case you can see that the file type 3 is actually .txt so in that case the program doesn't actually print out anything into our python shell but let's say if i change this to be file type 2 so in this case what it's going to do is if the file type 2 is not .txt it'll actually print out saying that the file is not .txt now in this case you can see that the file type 2 is actually not txt it's dot xlsx so we expect this statement to get get printed actually in the in the python shell so let's run this one and see what happens you can see that it says the file is not dot txt now similarly if i specify file type one and if i run this code you can see that again it says the file is not dot txt so right guys i hope you managed to grasp the basic concepts of using if and else conditional statements and uh, how to use them in practical applications along with logical operators such as AND, OR and NOT. So if you like this tutorial, show your support by giving it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe as well if you would like to get notified immediately whenever we release a new tutorial like this on our channel. And stay tuned because this is not the end of it. We're actually going to dive into more deeper concepts of uh, this if and else statements or if else conditions in the upcoming tutorials. So I'll see you guys in the next one.